The Texas Senate race will be one of the more closely watched matchups in November. A new poll shows incumbent Republican Senator Ted Cruz tied now with Democratic challenger Congressman Colin Allred. And Congressman Allred joins us now live in studio. Great to see you, Congressman. I think a lot of people saw that poll and they went, whoa, <laughs> he's out there doing his thing. I mean, yeah. Ted Cruz has been elected and reelected. He's been around a long time in Texas politics. I think some voters are just take it for granted. He's going to be the senator. Why are we seeing this kind of movement in your favor? I think fundamentally freedom is under attack in Texas right now. And it's not who we are, whether it's your freedom to make your own health care decisions, including access to an abortion or attacking, you know, banning books or telling kids what kind of hairstyle they can have in, in school. I mean, to me, uh, I see folks like Ted Cruz and the extremism they represent. That's not the Texas that I know. I'm a fourth generation Texan. I was born and raised in Dallas by a single mom. I played football at Baylor, played in the NFL, represented us in Congress for the last six years. I know who we are, and this isn't it. And I think that's what we're seeing reflected in the polls now, is that folks want to have a way to express that and to get rid of a senator who honestly only cares about himself. We've been talking this morning about the new uh, abortion law in Florida. Yeah. And the Supreme Court upholding 15 weeks will, will become six weeks as signed by Governor DeSantis last year. Are you seeing the impact of strict abortion laws in Texas in your race as well? Yeah. Well, you know, I feel for the, the folks in Florida because they're going to experience what we've experienced, which is what a near total ban on abortion looks like, which is 26,000 women who've given birth to their rapist child in Texas. That's according to the Houston Chronicle. Uh, it's a mother of two, like Kate Cox, who has a much wanted third pregnancy, who has to go to the emergency room four times. Her doctor says she needs a medically necessary abortion, and our state says no. In fact, they don't just say no, they say we're going to prosecute you, your doctor, your hospital. Mm -hmm. We're at the beginning of seeing the impacts of this, I think, across Texas, in our university systems, in our medical schools, in our business economy, where it's going to be harder to recruit and retain top talent. Uh, and to me, this extremism can't last, and that's why we have to rectify it at the federal level. And Molly, that's something we were talking about yeah. at the top of the show with Florida, which is there may be some people who who there are some people who like the six week ban, but there are many independents, Republicans, persuadable perhaps in the middle who go, hold on a second. That's gone way too far for well, us. Well, and we've seen in these states where they banned abortion that women who are pregnant get much less good medical care. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit? Are you seeing that on the yeah. ground? So my State of the Union guest was Dr. Austin Denard. She's an OBGYN in Dallas. Uh, she and her third pregnancy had to flee the state to get an abortion because her uh, baby's skull didn't form correctly. Uh, her husband is also an OBGYN, and they were telling me about uh, how difficult it is now to have these conversations in these rooms where, you know, my wife and I have had two boys in Dallas in the last five years. Every one of these ultrasounds or genetic tests, you're holding your breath, right. and you're hoping that they don't come in and say that there's a problem with the baby. And if, they, if there is, then that conversation becomes much harder. Yeah. But also when I talk to our medical schools, They'll tell you that they're worried about uh, who's going to be applying to come to Texas, who's mm -hmm. willing to come to Texas, who wants to be an OBGYN in Texas. I mean, this is fundamental, uh, that when you attack a right like this, that when you make these very difficult conversations even more difficult, that it has all these downstream impacts that we're just beginning to experience. You know, that, that, that issue that we're talking about right now is going to be enormous in the fall, state to state to state. But I would imagine, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, there's no state that's more impacted by the issue of immigration mm -hmm. and the border, yeah. Texas. That's right. What are the differences between you and your opponent, yeah. Ted Cruz, on the border? Yeah. Well, first of all, my family's from the border. Uh, my grandfather was a customs officer in Brownsville after serving the Navy in the Pacific. Uh, that's where my mom and my aunt grew up. I spent a lot of my childhood in Brownsville visiting my grandma there. I know that our border communities are not just a political backdrop. And I'm, I'm really sick and tired of folks going down there and treating it like they're on some kind of safari. You know, they put on their outdoor clothing and they go and they point out migrants in, in the weeds. What we need them to do is pass legislation to help us try and address this. And I heard you all talking about it on the last segment. But the legislation that we were trying to you know, consider uh, in the Congress, no state would have benefited from that more than Texas because of the CBP agents that would have hired, because of the immigration judges that would have hired, because of the changes to the asylum system. We had 300,000 crossings in December alone. It's 10,000 a day. That's a crisis. And I'm a Democrat who say this, we have a crisis at the border. We have to respond to it in a way that I think is consistent with our values, though. And that, I think, is one of the biggest differences between me and Cruz. Also, the fact that he wants to use it as a political issue right. instead of trying to solve it. And to me, I think that's just untenable in Texas. So I'm curious, Congressman, is, I don't have to tell you, winning as a Democrat in Texas is no easy feat, especially when we're talking statewide in a Senate race. So when you go back to Waco, where you played college football, yeah. And you talk to maybe a Republican voter who doesn't love Ted Cruz, but just votes for him because he's there on the ballot. 
but maybe it's persuadable. Mm -hmm. What's your argument to those voters why you are not yeah. maybe the last guy who ran against Ted yeah. Cruz or that you're yeah. a different kind of Democrat? Yeah. yeah, I am a different kind of cat. And, you know, listen, I'm literally the most bipartisan member of the Texas delegation. So I, and I'm proud of it. I've gotten awards for it from the Chamber of Commerce. I've been named the most bipartisan. And, and so I work hard at that to try and bring us together. But also fundamentally, the issue we have in Texas with Ted Cruz is that he only cares about himself. That's how you can go to uh, Cancun when 30 million Texans are freezing in the dark. Uh, that's how uh, you know, I think you can podcast three times a week instead of being a serious legislator trying to actually get some things done. Right. You know, I've been the exact opposite. You know, I was, I, I was raised by a community. When you're raised by a single mom, you have to rely on your public schools, on your YMCA. You know, I played football because that was a way out for me. Uh, and it taught me you know, how to lead, but also how to bring folks together. And that's going to be the fundamental difference between us. We have one of the chief dividers in the country in Ted Cruz. I'll be one of somebody who unites us. Um, you have a pretty wild state house <laughs> situation where Ken Paxton was impeached. There was a trial. Can you talk about, do, do you think that helps Democrats at all? Well, we're experiencing kind of a, a civil war, yeah. I, I guess you could say, uh, in Texas Republican Party, where uh, you know, the Speaker of the House, uh, who is incredibly conservative uh, and who passed a lot of conservative priorities, also thought, though, that you, know, you shouldn't be allowed to use the public dime to pay off uh, you know, for your affair, which right. is what the impeachment of the attorney general was all about. Uh, and uh, for, for whatever reason, you know, politically in the Senate, that didn't happen. But now they're going after all of these very conservative Republicans who uh, said, you know what, listen, that, this is a bridge too far for me. But I also think it's a bridge too far for Texas voters. Uh, we have had it with this extremism. We've had it with being embarrassed by our elected officials. Uh, and in some ways, we have to have a, a self-correction. And that's what I think this election will be about. We'll be self-correcting for Texans, you know, sending a message that this kind of extremism doesn't work. And that'll be a win for Texans. But I think we'll also make a better Republican Party in Texas by doing that. Mika? Congress, I'm looking at Congressman, uh, what Ted Cruz said, the press release he put out when uh, the Dobbs decision came out. He called it nothing short of a massive victory for life. <laughs> Is that where Texas is? And how do you appeal to people who are used to having him representing them as the state of Texas? Well, Mika, in a lot of ways, as I said, we are now experiencing what a near total ban on abortion looked like. Uh, and we are experiencing it in a way that's deeply personal for so many Texas families. And the stories that are coming out mm -hmm. are so heartbreaking. And so in some ways, I think you could say that I'm sure many Texans didn't realize that this is what it would look like, that victims of rape and incest would have nowhere to go, uh, that families who you know, really want to welcome a child but who have, you know, get the bad news that we all hope we don't get, that it's not going to be viable, have to flee the state. But this was the predictable outcome of the policies that Ted Cruz has been pursuing. And he doesn't want to talk about this. He wants to get in front of a camera about everything uh, except this, because of what's happening in Texas is a disaster. And we know that we can only restore it at the federal level. Uh, he won't even protect IVF. Uh, after the ruling in Alabama, we had a panic uh, in Texas clinics uh, for, for families who were hoping to try and welcome a child mm -hmm. who were worried that their embryos were now at risk. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is something that's untenable for us. It's, it's outrageous. Uh, and I know that when I'm in the Senate, we will restore this right. Democratic candidate for Senate in Texas, Congressman Colin Allred. Thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate it. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.